Hey YouTube, welcome to Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, I've got a little bit of stainless steel TIG welding on tap. We're going to be repairing this stainless steel marine hatch. All right, here's a close-up view of the three holes that were drilled and plug welds going through each. And I find it interesting that there are actually three individual plug welds because if you look on the hinge itself, you can only see one weld mark. Which means whoever welded this really was either inexperienced or hadn't worked on this process in a while. It stuck in the center, but uh, nothing on the ends. It was inevitable that this hinge was going to break off. I wanted to give you guys a quick undershot of the frame. Uh, this is the surface right here that would be up against the deck of the boat. When you do a plug weld through a hole, obviously you destroy the hole. But it also destroys my center point, where the hole was, how big the hole was. So what I need to do, uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to scuff this surface up with a sander real quick. And I'm going to take a uh, caliper and I'm going to scribe where I need to drill my holes. Because I don't want to go uh, in front of where that hinge stops. Uh, I'm ready to start doing the layout for my holes. And I'm going to be using a vernier caliper. Now all I need to do, I don't need to really read this. I just need to open up the jaws of this until it matches the portion of the hinge that's going to be sitting on top of the frame like so. Then I'm going to come over here and use it to scribe a line. That's pretty close to the manufacturer's line that was in there. Alright, so now I know that I can't drill beyond this point. The next step in the process is to measure the distance from this hinge to the side of this hinge, get my spacing right. If the spacing's off, and I weld this, it's not going to line up with the lid, so it'll never be able to be reassembled. Now, I want to stop what I'm doing for a second and actually have a little bit of a rant. Um, and it's nothing serious, but I want to point out something that's always bothered me. I'm going to be using a steel ruler for laying out uh, the distance left to right. And I wanted to point this ruler out because this, if you can see the scale, you see how there's a gap between the end of the ruler and the first sixteenth? I don't understand why some companies do that. It literally drives me up a wall because I want to put this flat edge up against the side of that hinge and start my measurement. I don't want to guess the distance between the end of the ruler and the first mark. So when you're going out and you're looking for something like this, if you're going to buy yourself a steel ruler, get one that's made with square corners so the edge of the ruler is your beginning measurement point. It makes your life a lot easier in the long run, especially when you're trying to lay stuff out. All right, guys, so I've got my measurement of 7 and 11 sixteenths. And line that up. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm going to scribe a line. Good. All right, that's my layout. Here's how I'm going to lay this out. What I've done is I've taken a piece of round stock and I've cut it to exactly 7 and 11 sixteenths. So what that does is when I slide this in, I've already got my spacing. I don't have to worry about the spacing at all now. Now this uh, round stock is being held on with cloth tape and a little tension from a spring clamp to make sure it doesn't move. Now the tape I'm using is called Tessa. Uh, I don't know if you can see inside the roll, but this is not electrical tape. It's not duct tape. It's not masking tape. This is a cloth tape. Um, it's got a very light adhesive on it, and the reason that I'm using this is because if it gets too hot, it will burn. That's fine. It's not going to melt. Melting rubberized tape and vinyl tape and all that stuff is a nightmare to clean off a of metal. So if you are going to use tape for a layout for any reason, and there's a chance that it might overheat, try to use a good cloth tape. Now that I have my distancing figured out, and I have a reliable method to make sure that I keep my distance correct, I'm going to take my hinge pin and align the hinges. Now I haven't figured out how I'm going to stabilize this yet because I do have to turn it upside down to weld it. So let me troubleshoot that and I'll get right back to you. Alright, I'm just about ready to weld. Uh, this took a little bit of figuring out. 
but I've got my spacer rod in here that's spacing these out to the appropriate measurement. I have my rod going through uh, the hinge pin holes on both sides to make sure they're in alignment. Because how I had to set this up to make sure all this was flat, um, you can see that I'm going to have to adjust this three times, weld once on that side, weld once on this side, and then weld once in the center. Um, you can see where my drill bit caught a little bit of the old weld and it started to walk. And uh, I don't know if you could see the line there, but it was in front of the line. I can't have that, so I'll just fill that in when I do the plug weld on this side. So, nothing to it but to weld it. Alright YouTube, ready to make the weld. Now, I know what some of you are going to say, or at least what you should be saying is, Hey, he's wearing short sleeves and he's about to weld. Yes, yes I am, and that is a definite no-no. But uh, we've had massive rain over here in the last day or so. It's humid as crazy and everything is sticking to me and for doing three little plug welds it's negligible I'm not gonna be sitting here running you know strings and strings of MIG or stick welding so uh, I'm not gonna be too bad but I will be the first one to admit that having any exposed skin at all is just dead wrong um, if this wasn't a job that was time sensitive I would put it off until uh, it was a cooler day but I gotta get it done and uh, that's just the way the world works man all right Try not to disturb any of this. Now after the first weld, the one thing I like to do is come in here and make sure that the hinge pin is still moving freely. Because if it's not, I'm still at a point where it's going to be relatively easy to fix. But it's moving pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug the second hole. I'm also going to fill in a little, uh, a little mistake I made with the drill press. I hate standing up and TIG welding, that's my other pet peeve, but there's just really no good way to do this right now. Still feels good. Alright guys, I'm going to shut the camera off here. I've got to move some things around before I do my last weld. I'll be back in a couple seconds and I'll show you the end result. Alright YouTube, so I just took my spacer out, peeling off the tape here. Uh, I went ahead and went a little above and beyond what the manufacturer had done. Now when you see a product like this, this hatch there were probably thousands of them made. Which to me means that at somewhere along the lines there was a jig and that jig was used to align everything, do all the welding, drill all the holes. This is a manufacturing process. When you're by yourself in your shop, you're not a manufacturer. You don't have access to all that stuff. So putting three little plug welds on a hinge, yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have to design something that's going to hold everything straight the way it was in the factory, you could spend 90% of your time setting up to weld rather than doing the welding itself. And in some cases, it's more like 95 to 99% of the time, because running the weld bead is easy once you get the hang of welding. Now, I went a little above and beyond on this. Um, I did go ahead and put a weld bead along the back where the hinge meets the frame, uh, along with the three plug welds. And I did that for a very specific reason. Um, I, when I weld, really like to take into consideration what I'm welding. To give you an example, if somebody said, hey, I need you to weld the pedal back on a bicycle, you know, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a nice bead around it, and I'm going to say, okay, here, you're done. If somebody hands me a trailer hitch and tells me that it's going to be holding a 25,000 pound load from falling off the back of a truck in the middle of the highway, I'm going to really sit down, take a look at everything, and go over everything in my head before I even start the job. That's kind of like what I'm doing here. This is a boat hatch. It seems like a relatively run-of-the-mill welding project, but you have to understand that a boat hatch is designed to keep the water outside the boat. The water's not supposed to be inside the boat, because then you don't have a boat, you have a submarine, and it's the worst kind of submarine because there's no air for... You, yeah, you got it. So anyway, if you take a little bit of extra time, that little bit of reinforcement, it makes me feel better. No one's ever going to see it. It's going to be under 
uh, the bottom side of the hatch up against the deck. So no one's ever going to take a look at it, see how I welded it. Nobody's going to care as long as this thing is watertight and they're pretty sure that this is a piece of equipment that's going to function properly and in turn make sure that um, their family stays safe when they're out on the water. So when you take on different welding projects, try to keep all that in mind. What you're welding is just as important as how you're welding it and how much thought you put into welding it. Just my two cents. I am done with the weld. Just got to do a little bit of polishing, get rid of some of the heat marks from the top of the hatch, and I am going to call this done. Um, just need to go in the house where the air conditioning is and write up the invoice and then go drop it off. Uh, I do want to take the opportunity here once again at the end of the video to thank everybody who is my subscriber for stopping by and people who are just wandering through if you've made it this far in the video. Thank you also for taking the time to view the content that I post on YouTube and I do hope you found it useful.